and, and originally too i think that's okay kim do you have that statement handy um 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 hold on <laughs> sorry i didn't i i wasn't okay i'm just emailing yes. Bruce, so. pursuant to governor baker's march 12 2020 order suspending the open the, suspending um certain provisions of the open meeting law this meeting of the TAC is being conducted via remote participation it should be noted that um this meeting does not have a quorum so this is not an official meeting however we have two guests from UMass who would like to make a presentation about their work on the PVTA so that's what this is right now thank you Good. all right thank you you are are we ready yes okay great great so hi i'm olivia um this is tate if you don't know us and we're going to be talking to you about valley on board which is a part of the larger pvta effort to update the comprehensive regional transit plan for service areas in the hampshire and hampton county can you hear me all right yes okay. we can hear you great um so the Valley on Board project is funded by the HOPE grant, which stands for Helping Obtain Prosperity for Everyone, which is a grant from the Federal Transit Administration in the U.S. Department of Transportation. The goal is to help environmental justice communities, and the Federal HOPE grant um, aims to provide public transit in areas of persistent poverty in the U.S. Uh -oh. So right now we're building off the framework that was designed to oh, Four scenarios and scenario planning is a decision supported tool that helps us plan for an uncertain rapidly changing future it helps identify resilient transportation investments that accommodate a range of possible futures and it can tell us what we may look um, expect to look for in the future so we looked at key drivers of change um, climate change global technology energy policy and funding as seen in, on the left and then um, these drivers lead to a range of possible outcomes that can help the four scenarios um, I've seen up on the slide. Do, do, do. Okay, so this is just depiction of the four scenarios. So they they were used as inspiration for four possible alternatives um, of the PVTA fixed route. So like city bus uh, system. So the routes with fixed schedules. So each alternative is designed to serve the needs of a changing Pioneer Valley in a different way. Uh, so, uh, and you know, while the dream PVTA network might include all of the new routes uh, and flex zones and all the other recommendations from the alternatives, this approach helps us understand, understand the trade-offs necessary in designing or redesigning a transit system. Could, uh, could you pause for a second? Cause you have a quorum. Oh. Sorry, just one moment, Tate. Who who has entered? Marcus. Marcus. Hi hey, guys. Marcus. Hi. Good, good to see. You. Do you want to um, reiterate, Tracy, what we're looking at right now? Um. Yes. Yeah, so, um, just uh, Marcus, since you just started joining us, uh, we have two UMass grad students with us right now, and they're talking about the work that they've been doing with the PVTA. It's a two-year project. Oh, excellent. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Please proceed. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so this is just, I know the maps here are pretty small, so it's hard to see really, but uh, gives an idea of the four distinct uh, route designs. So for example, in this one new small city over here, the strongest drivers were funding policy and the historical legacy of the Pioneer Valley. From these drivers, imagine a future with highly concentrated urban centers, as you can see uh, depicted here, and um, federal funding for transportation, and then also younger generations valuing smaller carbon. Oh. Overall. So as you can see, much of the network envisioned in this re redesigned scenario centered around the major um, population centers as opposed to focusing on increased sprawl. So from this imagined future, we developed an alternative that included increased bus frequency and more express routes. So each of the scenarios followed this process of future exploration and alternative development, uh, resulting okay. in these four distinct alternatives. Yes. 
Can I, I'm just curious because I'm not used to seeing maps like this. Can you just highlight what the hubs are in your um, map? What yeah. towns those are? Yeah, you know, and also just relatedly, I have it on like my biggest monitor and I can barely read the legend. And so I don't know if anybody, you know, watching from home or anything, if you could just describe some of it out loud, that would be helpful too. Um, certainly. And I'll just mention that all of this is on the website. Uh, this is just, you know, to give an idea of what, what the networks sort of look like in terms of the routes. So up here, I don't know, can you see my mouse? Yes, yeah. Okay. So this is the whole PBTA service area, right? And that's gonna include um, Hampshire, Hamden, Hampton. and like part of like up to Sunderland and Deerfield and- Yeah, I'm just not okay. familiar with this. Yeah, time. no, could sure. You, if you could no just work. talk about the hubs, thank you. So up here where I'm circling right now is Amherst. Okay. And then, Hadley, Northampton, East Hampton, and then down here is like Springfield, Holyoke. Right. The, the blobs are micro transit, so like shared ride on demand uh, transit service zones. Um, for and of course the red lines are the fixed route bus service, the regular city bus service, um, and then the shading. I wouldn't worry about it's just has to do with our population projections for the different scenarios and so uh, and sure. environmental justice communities based on those projections again more detail can definitely be found on the website um, where where these are you know full scale resolution and there's we'll have the link at the end as well but just to give an idea so as you can oh, see thank this, you yeah so this new small city one is really concentrated around those urban centers Mm -hmm. As opposed to the Valley Stasis, which is, you know, more of business as usual type of uh, scenario with, you know, this is similar to what the existing network looks like, uh, just with population projections fleshed out as if, you know, um, the trends continued as they have been, and then, cool. uh, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I guess the goal of this, uh, the, the studio, the regional planning studio this year. So last year, those scenarios were really developed. And this year we're working, we've been working on public engagement, uh, particularly uh, with current and future riders. So riders and non-riders, as well as stakeholders um, in order to uh, have a final route redesign recommendation in the in um, December so so we are looking for everyone's feedback at this point and so just uh you know to give an idea of what we've been doing in Amherst uh there was some tabling at the Cranberry Fair we do uh tabling quite a bit at the Amherst Survival Center as well as the farmer's market also put out uh, materials, informational materials, um, of course, around UMass and held events at UMass as well, but um, at the library and, and other similar destinations. So the website is valleyonboard.org, and that's where you can go to take the survey and also learn more and view the report from last year, which has more detail about these maps and such. Great. So what kind of feedback are you looking for? Are you looking for like kind of large scale feedback or like smaller, like this specific, like how specific do you want feedback to be if you're kind of looking at it for the whole system? Really any type of uh, feedback. We have a survey and we have a few activities that we've done to engage um, other communities in the area. So whatever feedback you want to give us, that would be great. And we're definitely looking for um, how we can help have the PVTA like future designs help the people get to where they want to go so really anything related to that helps us and any comments you have yeah. on the existing network are also great in terms of uh, within the survey which by the way uh, you're entered to win one of a few $25 gift cards if you um, take the survey at valleyonboard.org and um, but it, near the end, there's a comment section, and we'll definitely be reviewing those comments, and that's where that feedback 
go. Cool. And also, if you're able to share uh, the link, and mm -hmm. you can also send other materials, um, that would be great. Any individual. So in what, can you just speak a little bit to what the time frame is like for this process? So you have the survey open now, like how long will the survey be there? And then mm -hmm. you know, what are the subsequent steps? Yeah, so the survey will be open at least until the end of December. Um, and then uh, after that, we'll be really taking a much, uh, you know, a deeper dive into the data that we've collected and finalizing those recommendations for um, for the network redesign for the 20 year plan. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, okay, thank you. Great. <clears throat> okay. Um, so thank you uh, so much for that presentation and our next, what's our first? agenda item because I don't happen to have well do I guess the thing is do we want to give people I know that it sounded when I talked to Kate that he paid he was interested in maybe getting some feedback if we had any feedback to share now that would Does be that, great well, I mean I had I had sort of left some room on the agenda for that if we wanted to give that a little time and also there's attendance in the audience like if they want to use this opportunity to give feedback if if people agree with that yes no thoughts I don't have any feedback at the moment. Okay, I'm sure. going to go. I'm going to go and look at this website a little more because I'm not that familiar with it. Yeah, and I was going to say the same, it. Kim. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, man, and I'll post it in places that I on the interwebs, as we like to say, that I visit. Um, so, so hopefully we'll get lots of feedback for you all, and it, it, it's really interesting and what is this part of like what are you like what kind of what kind of grad students are you and like yeah so this is part of the regional planning studio for the masters of regional planning program cool. yeah Great. yeah thank you that's super well thanks again um, well thanks so i i just have one like sort of general comment and that um, I mean, I'll, I'll mention a specific example, but I see it as sort of a larger challenge sometimes is um, like I and I know that we brought this up and we've met with um, our the town's PVTA board rep to um, one thing is like, for example, the just the fact that if you live in, say, on East Hadley Road, which is like an area with a large transit dependent population um in south amherst and you want to go to the malls in hadley which are only a few miles away like that there are no direct connections and i think part of that could be just in terms of like some of the funding and so on so the way the only way to get to take the bus would be to like go into the center of amherst and then go out to um the mall so it ends up being a really long trip and so there are there is a valley bike station there, but then there are also just people who walk. Um, but it seems like because you know some of the funding, the funding responsibility is at the municipal level, and perhaps like Hadley hasn't thought that that's uh, you know something that they have the resources to fund, or that that's something important to them, particularly if it's Amherst people who are coming to Hadley. So it just seems like that could also be a challenge in like some other communities in the region sometimes that like the the services that are being provided are greater than just for the people in that town like it's also helps their region and so I think you know there's a lot of small towns who may not have the resources to help pay directly but those links are so important if there are ways to spend like CMAC money or other regional transportation money to help create those connections and reduce like the municipal share if that's a financial burden on those communities. So just a thought, but. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, certainly. Oh, also something I'll just mention, which is not exactly related to this project, but PVTA is going to be fare free from uh, the 25th of November through the end of the year. So. Oh, know. wow great opportunity to try using the bus for anyone. yeah awesome that's great
Yeah. And so, um, Myra, you have your hand raised. Yes. Um, <coughs> I have a question as to whether you actually distributed this survey in places like Hatfield and Southampton that have not paid into the PVTA, so they don't even have service. And I wonder if anybody cares in those towns whether they ever do have service. So I didn't know whether you questioned them, but they're not part of the PVTA, as far as I understand it. Thank you for they the choose question. Not to, they choose not to pay, pay in. Right, right. So we distribute it through a few regional, uh, you know, regionally, I think through the planning commission, PVPC, and a couple other, you know, that, that send it out to regional email list. I'm not sure at this point how much response we've gotten from those com communities in particular, but uh, we were just generally um, targeting. Uh, Hampshire and Hamden counties. But thank you. Okay. Because I wonder how you get a hold of people who have no service because their communities wouldn't necessarily be interested in providing service because they have to pay. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's sort of like they're excluded and I don't know how to get their opinions, but it'd be really good if you could figure out which towns are excluded and how you can go out of your way to reach the people in those towns because they seem not to have. Either they have a voice that they don't want service or um, which doesn't seem very um, community minded or um, or they are not being allowed to have a voice. So um, yeah, actually. So um, I'm sorry, I'm not to interrupt. So Guilford, um, Christine Lindstrom is in the um, audience. Can you please let her in as a panelist? Sorry to interrupt the flow. Um, yeah, he might have he might have just left for a moment. <laughs> oh, there he is. There he is. Can you can you please let Chris in to thank you? She should be coming in. Okay. And um, all right. So I think that sounds great. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming and um, telling us about this project. And thank you so much, guys. We'd love to get an update. So you know, as it's going along, right? So. Um, now, our next thing is the public comment period, and maybe that's part of why attendees are here. So, yeah, I think we should. <laughs> if, um, yeah, I mean, how do you want to handle that, Kim? Do you think we should let people let in them, or, yeah, or let I, them raise their hand? People yeah. can raise their hand mm -hmm. if they want to speak. And, right. and let's get Chris in. I'm not sure what's going on with her. So. I think Chris is, does Chris have her video off? <laughs> oh, maybe. I'll text her. Say we're trying to let you in. She should still be able to come in with her video off now. Yep. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's doing some weird things tonight. So one of our um, people in the audience has their hand raised. Is Peggy Matthews Nilsson? Okay, she oh. can. She can yeah. talk. Pe Peggy, will you will you ask your question or your comment? Uh, this is Sigurd Nelson. Oh, great. Okay. Um, I just wanted to comment that I saw that the wildflower drive sidewalks are on the agenda tonight and they indicate that uh, we have been, well, back in 2014, I think Guilford will remember this, the Amherst Woods Homeowners Association, of which I was the president, my wife Peggy Matthews Nilsson was the vice president, uh, submitted a petition from our neighborhood to get the sidewalks that were crumbling uh, replaced along Wildflower Drive in particular, and also Larkspur Drive from Wildflower out to um, the, bus the bus stop out on Old Belcher Town Road. Um, obviously, that's been eight years, and uh, uh, we don't know where that request ever went to our petition. Initially, we submitted it to the town, and then the TAC got created, and uh, it was forwarded. We were told it was forwarded to the TAC. Um, and I just want to reiterate that uh, this neighborhood needs the new sidewalks. They're over 30 years old. They're crumbling. They're often underwater uh, in the winter. Uh, they, there's water on them, it freezes in the summer. If we get a rain, they're under mud. Uh, some are basically non-existent. And many of our 
our neighbors, people in this neighborhood, walk in the street instead of the sidewalk because it's safer. Uh, one neighbor told us that uh, her husband tripped and fell and broke his arm because of the uh, sidewalks. The roots are, are in it. And we just want to uh, support the TAC in putting us on the list for getting those sidewalks uh, repaved and renewed because the, the, we have a lot of older um, residents in the neighborhood. And also we've had an influx of young families with children uh, who take their strollers, their kids with bikes, um, and uh, these sidewalks are heavily used. And we have a lot of speeders. <laughs> and also uh, once in a while we get speeders on wildflower people cutting through from Station Road to Route 9. So I just want to ask for support to getting those sidewalks uh, repaved. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks so much. I mean, I will say that um, we did put it on the agenda item because um, I'm not familiar with that um, petition that was done. I wasn't on the TAC then. I'm not sure how long ago that happened. Um, but we have heard from one resident a number of different times. And I was put on the agenda just to see sort of what the tax role might be in trying to help. Um, there, We also do have an item on the agenda just about capital improvements for appropriations. Um, <laughs> for like this current year, because there was additional funding. I'm also interested in what's happening, you know, next year. Um, one thing is that when <clears throat> in the packet for the TAC, which is not an online packet, but in responding to the resident who's written a number of times, one of the things Chief Livingstone said is that a number of the people who are speeding in that neighborhood are residents in that neighborhood. And it's not so much cut through traffic, at least when they've investigated it. So just bringing that up, not that. Yeah, and I, I know um, I probably I've been on this committee the longest and um, certainly this has come up before and that in response to this, we, um, you know, that's why we ended up um, making the the maps and the, um, and, also the um the maps of the uh, <clears throat> the connections that we're interested what's that called tracy i'm sorry why am i so like connector connector sidewalks the part of the network right you yeah. want to have a pedestrian yeah. facilities yeah. network yes and what are our priority networks that we put together and that and was definitely um you know a consideration <laughs> it's been on our radar for a while um so um I mean, it, it needs to get on to, I mean, and certainly to your um, comment, um, uh, it's definitely, it definitely came to us a while ago. And I definitely remember this and, um, you know, we're trying to prioritize who, you know, there's a lot of repair that needs to happen, particularly to sidewalks and bike lanes throughout the town. <clears throat> And sure. I think traditionally, too, one challenge has been that, um, and we'll, we do have this item on the capital improvements and the additional requests, the additional funding, but one issue has just been that there haven't been that many miles of sidewalks and roads like fixed each year in the budget. It's typically been like a few miles at most, right? And we have right. over 60 miles of sidewalks. So um, a lot of people, you know, view their their sidewalks and roads as priorities, understandably. And so um I don't think it's even been a few miles that, of sidewalks. Yeah. I think it's been maybe a mile of sidewalks. I don't know. May what do you think, Guilford? G Guilford would know the number. So. <laughs> um even with the with the new sidewalks, we've probably done close in the last two years, we've probably done close to maybe 10 miles. Oh but, well that's awesome. But traditionally, right, the capital improvements, it's only been a few per year. Isn't that right? Or yeah, something? it's been hit and miss in the past. Okay. So we hear you. <laughs> it's not that we don't. Yeah. Are there other um, questions from anyone else in the audience? Anyone else like to raise their hand? <clears throat> If not, then we will continue with um, our, uh, it looks like our next agenda item is um, 
the bike and pedestrian <laughs> priority network, which is what I was referring to um, previously. Um, yeah, so one reason I put it back on the agenda is we have talked about this a number of times, right? We had that marked up map that we did, I think back, we marked it up over on meetings, yeah. right? It was during the, yeah, but I think it was probably, I think it was in 2021, you know, that yeah. we had four or five meetings that we went over it. Um, and I know that it fell through to have a GIS intern I'm um, work on the map. And maybe that's something that can be revisited again. Um, and there's actually somebody who just started working in my office who has like a degree in GIS. So maybe we could hire them on the side or something. Um, but just that it's, it was coming up. I was listening in on part of the planning uh, board meeting the other night and it was coming up about the bike pedestrian plan um, in relation to the development on Olympia Drive too, like in terms of the different modes and so mm -hmm. on. And so it would be great. I mean, the thing is at this point, right, it's it's almost been like two years since we marked it up and things continue to change. And, you know, as new housing is built and so on, we'd want to, we need to change it again. <laughs> and so if there are ways, you know, or if what Guilford things might happen or, you know, can we go out and if you've had, you know, other people express interest in being interns or if there's other ways we can get it done because yeah. I just feel like even that plan itself, right? I think it dates back to 2018 or 2019. So initially we so. really want to move it forward i know that was expressed as a priority too for the north amherst um plan the donut plan so but i know guilford any thoughts on that or um we can i mean if there's uh we can probably try to do something um we are coming up on an intercession soon. If there's somebody that wants to work during intercession, we could possibly work them in. That um, would be great. We're just having another, well, we have some issues with space. Okay. Um, so they definitely would probably have to work at home. Um, we've had some issues recently with working with people working for uh, from home uh, remotely. So um, it just takes a lot of time on our part when somebody's working from home. Remotely, that's a, I guess that's the way you call it. Um, they could be anywhere working. Um, so yeah, we can actually, if anybody knows anybody, we can possibly try to figure it in. We have one person who's finishing up a project uh, shortly and wants to do something different. Maybe we can uh, move that person to this. Okay. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Well, and I know too, right, that there's that master's program where they get this like graduate certificate with GIS, you know, and you and I had talked with them and, um, or at least had emails with them or something. Like if there is some kind of, do you think that that might work? Cause we could go ahead and set, I mean, it's a little late for intercession cause it's only like a few weeks away, but um, if you think that that might be a good resource for finding somebody to do this work, I mean, maybe they could do it in the early spring or something. Well, if you know anybody, just tell them to, yeah, okay. But if we knew that there was something available, like we could go ahead and send it to the program director because I know that their students are sometimes looking. Um, so, um, I know most of you work for the university. Um, we'd like to, if we could, not make it a student project. Okay. No, of course. Got it. All right, thanks. <clears throat> okay. Uh Next, uh, the next agenda <sighs> item is um, the wildflower flower drive, other concerns, resident concerns, potentially including the crosswalks near Kendrick Park. Yeah, and I guess, so I'll, I'll mention just the crosswalks is, I was interested in the time frame of that. Somebody had reached out to me that they were recently rear-ended at Kendrick Park when they were driving because they stopped for people in the crosswalk. It was a crosswalk on the south end of Kendrick Park on the main street on, um, I guess that's like East Pleasant Street at that point, right? So um, I was just curious about the time frame for like when those rapid rectangular flashing beacons and the crosswalk upgrades are going to be happening. And if is, they'll, they'll probably be in a little while. 
But that okay. was that was at the south end of the common of the park. Oh, the way well the driver who said they got hit, they said that it happened at the north at the yeah, at the south end. More like know. well, no, but towards um right, there's um the Garcia's crossing and it like not at the roundabout, like going like isn't there the crosswalk? Yeah. Well, that's like midway down. Though. Yeah, yeah, like midway down. Yeah, I no, meant yeah, no, not not like not all the way down, right? Yeah. So, so I, I, we, this is what we call them. We call them Garcias. We okay. Call them, we call them Prey Street, and we call them Halleck. Oh, I see. Okay. So, <laughs> so oh, and there are th the there idea. are is that correct? There are three there. There's yeah, the Garcias, yeah. Halleck, yeah. and uh, okay. And Prey oh, that's Street. Pre that's pretty good. So that's three in that stretch. Yeah. But we're so. only gonna, we're only going to put the beacons at one, which is Garcia's. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. That makes sense. Um, could you let even to Guilford? Uh, so what? I mean, what's the concern then? I mean, we have. I have to say, I like the fact that all of them are using the um, well, the the fake brick stuff, so they're going to be nice and visible uh i guess the concern is the time frame till we get the the lights on board the lights are only going going at one yeah right when? i think our see is yeah and yeah. and the driver also just was wondering if you know repainting them because they don't all not all three crossings have brick and stuff right too is that no oh. prey street's the only right. one that's still yeah. not the right oh yeah sorry the one on the south yeah yeah right okay so I, I mean, and and actually, so I just wanted that. That actually. Well, so I mean, actually, I'm kind of curious though. So the one place that we actually have it marked is the one where they got rear-ended, and that person <laughs> now wants everything else to be painted, even though the one that is visible is the one that they got rear-ended at. So it's kind of like, yeah. I don't know. I I said I would just bring it up, but yeah. And I don't know, too. I mean, like, Gar Marcus, right? You're the one who said that your family has parked across the street, like, behind yeah, for sure. Garcia's yeah. no, and Cross. It's, it's and, the greatest. And, and yeah, um, it would be so. ideal with those lights. But I guess we'll still wait and see. But right, it's, just, it's so. good, the fact that they are, it is so clearly marked on the road surface. Yeah. Right. So. But we still really need the ones that go from um, uh, McClellan across the street there. There should be some on right. um, Pleasant too, because I see that all the time. And that's going to be a table too, right? Uh, speed it's table. supposed to be. It's supposed to be raised. Yeah. Yeah. That. I mean, oh, that particular intersection. Area. It's supposed to be. Right, Guilford. Does that look like that's going to be on the improvement plan for next year? It's next year. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, that's great. And is there more, do you think there's going to be more work on that stretch of North Pleasant Street on the west side of Kendrick next year too? Or is how's that looking for your schedule? The plan is to do all the improvements on that stretch from wow. McClellan to Triangle. Wow, that's huge. There's, there's um there's painting on the street right now or or spray paint. It looks like there might be a bike lane that goes in there sooner than later. Uh, no, it shouldn't be. Oh, because it looks like there definitely is like markings right now for um, that. But I also saw right that the pavement, there's also, since it turned one way, right, there's the markings to try to channel people into using the main part of the road and not using like the whole road width. Like you've done that too on the north end of North Pleasant Street there, yes. right, to discourage like two-way traffic and people yeah, you know, so jostling been... next to each other and and there's been some doodling. So there's been some doodling. Yeah, they were measuring some things. So you might see okay. little measure marks out there where they pulled things out and measured. And I connected a few things together just to see how it fits. Oh, yeah, that might be what it is. Because it looks like there's a bike lane right now. It looks like there's a bike lane paint oh, in spray paint on the right side of the road um, closest to where the cars are parked. I mean, it's a perfect width for a bike lane. I mean, it looks like it's a bike lane. So just, you know, related to that. So a few weeks ago, the council had approved 
like adding capital improvement appropriations for this current fiscal year, the 2023 year, right, for sidewalks and roads. So I put this on the agenda just because I was wondering if there were specific projects that are allocated for that funding, or is that still to be determined? Uh, we're, we're working on the list. Um, okay. We have, a, we have a bunch of paving. Um, we have a bunch of paving on it, and we're kind of working on that list. Sidewalks is coming along. We're going to do the section of the sidewalk um, on North Pleasant Street from Meadow Street back towards um, the boulders. Not the boulders. Um, Puffton. Oh, yeah, cool. Puffton okay. Village. Yeah. Okay. So you're, you're moving. So, so is that a list that you could share with us, or is, are you are you asking for input from TAC or DAAC or anybody else, or but there, no. Nope. But that's no. per no. your plan that you previously submitted to us, right? Yes. The, yeah. Uh, okay. North got North it. Pleasant. Yeah. Yep. North Pleasant. Yeah. The plans going to the town will, you know, be what we submit to the town manager and say this is what we want okay. to do. Oh, got and it. Okay. Whatever he wants to ask, what whoever he wants to ask the input, it's it's how it would go. Okay. If someone has something they want to put in, the capital, the town's capital plan right now is open for capital projects. Um, you can submit it. I don't well. I never, I've never done it, so I don't know. All I know is, as a resident, you can submit a capital project. Sure. I don't know how much you have to submit or how much information, other than I want this here or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, so maybe that's something we could talk about next TAC meeting, right? If I mean, I know that individually people can submit their own projects, but if you know, as a group, we had some projects in mind. What do you guys I think? think? Repaving at Rosemary Street would be great. Yeah. Yeah. we could we could revisit our priority yeah and our priority list yeah, yeah for sure for sure yeah that would that's a good idea for the agenda yeah it's not on the agenda this time i just wanted to know like sort of where that stood in well, and in terms of the capital improvement requests that are out now those are actually for the 2024 budget there right? is, so there, to start in july is that right there, there is so much work on the on our plates right now Oh. We have probably the 23 construction season and the 24 construction season. Oh my gosh. Probably all wrapped up with the exception of choosing what we pave in 2024. Wow. wow. That's amazing. We have a we have the Mass Works grant at Pomeroy 116, which we're working oh, on. We have another Mass Works grant on Belchertown Road and well, Belchertown Road from Southeast Street up to about Colonial Village area. We have um, sidewalks on Boltwood and College Street, and then we have the North Common project or the big ones. Mm -hmm. um, and to tell the truth, we only have one contractor who's bidding on these. Wow. wow. The same one. The, the same, same one. one. Uh, well, we haven't bid them yet, but no, the, right. the, the, projects we bid, the projects we've bid recently have always have been the, the same, same contract basic contractor. And so are like, is anything like, like the roundabout at Amity and University Drive or are they not, they're not on the list yet, right? So. Oh, uh, no. No, okay. I don't know. It was on the list a while ago. But okay. Yeah, well, I got but it. What about, what about all the school, the, the new elementary school, like all of that area? Well, that, that I mean. That is not anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you have but that, Bel that Belchertown Road project, right? That that's like connect, that's the access to Colonial Village. That that will be good too from the intersection of Colonial Village. And is that's going to be the access is going to be on Route Nine, or is it going to be on Southeast Street for the new school? No, no, no. That Mass Works the project grant. is it just is it just along Belchertown Road to Colonial yes. Village? Not because Colonial Village, right? There's also entrances on Southeast Street. It's just uh, Route Nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the reason <laughs> I had put, I mean, I it was it was good to get some you know feedback during the public comment part, the, but the reason I had put the um, Wildwood Wildflower Drive on there is just 
because like, and, and I know residents have come to us with questions before, um, and it, right, we used to on the TAC website, we used to even have a form that says like, submit your request here. And just sort of just to, and I know that this is something that's still an ongoing discussion with the council and TSO, but when those requests come, you know, sort of what happens to them, <laughs> like how can they be, um, like what's the process and do you just do, you know, like in this case, right, the town manager responded to the neighbors and then I guess that, that could be it. But I just don't, I just didn't know whether there was like more of a role for TAC or if TAC should be responding to any of these. I mean, they used to come to TAC directly. I, I, I realize it's all very kind of fuzzy, but. It's, it's all still very fuzzy and yeah. it seems to get fuzzier. No one, the council and the town manager hasn't come to terms and made out right. a plan of really what they want the TAC to do. Sure. So, and that's, so it, they just go <laughs> to the town manager and he just asked for things. Um, he asked the police department to do some things out on Wildflower Drive. Okay. Um, the gentleman who submitted the letter from Wildflower Drive is in the audience. Yeah, right. And so, so maybe instead of, so Andy, I know you're our, um, our our representative to bring things to TAC, but what if you said to, to the TSO, hey, there's this group of people who have been thinking about transportation for all of Amherst for a long time, who are ready to do some work. <laughs> Why don't we toss them, some, give them something to do? Like, I don't, you know, I'm a professional like everyone else here. And I come to these meetings because I want to work. I want to do good for our community. And instead, we pretty much just end up twiddling our thumbs, doing nothing. And we have this massive history of, of, of the transportation needs. We've thought exclusively about this. And I appreciate that our council members have many, many, many tasks to think about. Um, what about saying, hey, there's this group of people who have these, the, who are ready to get our transportation network prioritized and to take the, you know, guesswork out of which projects should come next in our town equitably. And, to, you know, instead of just sitting here waiting for projects to come our way, what do you, what do you think? It's a good point, and I'm glad you raised it. And I will take it to TSO and ask the chair, TSO chair, Anika, to uh, put it on the next agenda for discussion. I think that we have a big problem at TSO as it is, and you've actually uh, cited something that is a resource to try and figure out how to how to deal with it, because I think the TSO is over loaded with issues right now of varying kinds, a lot of which involve Guilford in one way or another. He's right. working on all of them uh, because uh, he's been uh, dealing with meetings where we've talked about water and sewer regulations, which really came from uh, his staff and from Amy Urseki. Uh, we've been talking about street lighting, which came from a couple of counselors. And then we've been talking about uh, review of the uh, whole system of picking up uh, refuse and composting and refuse re uh, reduction. And uh, we just got um, some assistance from DEP to help with that. Uh, so that there are all of these different pieces that are flying around there. And we're not, and I was just thinking about this the other day because we've been talking for the longest time about speed limits, which is really what the wildflower was posed as. And uh, we um, haven't really addressed the, the basics of it yet. And uh, I was really thinking that I needed to remind the uh, committee of that. And so uh, tying that together with what you just suggested is to uh, re, uh, talking again about 
um, the role of your committee and how we can take advantage of your expertise uh, works in well, there. Because, because yeah, well, you know, so, so we've talked on this committee extensively about lighting, lighting options, mainly as they have to do with sidewalks and um, crosswalks and things like that. Um, we've talked about standards for sidewalks, which I see, um, and, and, um, crosswalks, which are something that, that, um, I see somewhere on some agenda. I'm not sure if it's your TSO or the council, or if it's Guilford, um, you know, we've also talked a lot about, about ways to, um, uh, extensively about ways, general ways to, um, slow speeds in the areas and and we've also we also have accumulated a lot of information, both expertise and like just chatting with state laws and regulations, uh, uh, having to do with like setting speed limits. And we've you know we essentially have worked extensively on um, our our trans our sidewalk and street plan, which is the goal is to prioritize you know which to take the the squeaky wheelness out of out of who gets the next sidewalk and to try to make it as a part of an integrated plan to connect all parts of town in an equitable manner. So um you know we've we've worked really hard for many, many years on these kinds of issues. Um so I think yeah. you know, and, and everything I think pretty much the council, the TSO has taken our suggestions really to heart because we literally have thought about only this stuff for a long, long time. So please give us give us something like to sink our teeth into because we like doing this kind of work for everybody. And and I and I hate just like coming to these meetings and just waving our hands and not really having a lot to do because I like, I, we all are here because we want to make the town and the transportation and the sidewalks better. Well, and just on a related comment, you know, I mean, we do have our priority network plan, which we worked out, we worked out the networks, we just don't have a final GIS map of it. But I know that after the last like capital improvement cycle, like a few people did reach out to me just about, um, you know, how the capital improvement requests, right? I mean, sometimes counselors will bring capital improvement requests. Um, sometimes they come from other people, like we were not we're not being formally um, consulted about, you know, with the capital improvement request. I know that sometimes at the DAC meetings, it will be on the agenda to say, hey, are there a list of sidewalks we want to prioritize or something? Again, I realize that some of that has to do with the, you know, what the role of the TAC is and things, but it just, I would hope that, you know, and, and Andy, right, you're here both as a council representative, but you also are on the finance committee. Right, like if a committee such as DAC or such as TAC or, you know, another suitable committee has already sort of vetted things and said like these are priorities, like if as an advisory committee we're allowed to have priorities, um, it seems like maybe that could give some like weight to those or help just, you know, when there are so many capital improvement requests for the public right away for, you know, road sidewalks and so on that that can help prioritize some of it. No, yeah, I think you're, making, limited funds, yeah. you're making a good point and uh, Guilford looks like he has some comment thoughts about it too. Uh, the sidewalks, for, as I'll use as an example, come at us, um, in the, us, I mean all of us, in such a variety of ways. Like uh, there's uh, was reference made earlier in the meeting about the um, fact that there's a joint Capital Planning Committee process of obtaining citizen requests and considering citizen requests for projects and uh, that that happens from time to time. And several years ago, um, there was a, a couple of people who uh, felt very strongly about a sidewalk along North Pleasant, right, I'm sorry, East Pleasant Street. And um, the uh, committee at that time uh, put, um, put it in as a priority to at least do a design study, mm -hmm. which I think Guilford was, uh, uh, would know more about where the status of the, 
of that is um, some come through grants, um, some come from citizen uh, to citizen complaints, or um, and I assume that some are coming from your committee. But you know, we don't. We seem to have so many entry points, and um, you know, I'm not sure that in the end the sorting isn't done by uh, availability of funds as much as anything else, but that's where Guilford might be able to help us out. Guilford, you have your hand raised. Thank you, Andy. Thanks. Um, I'm going to deny this, even though it's being recorded. <laughs> um, but if we push, and it does need to be, there needs to be a clear, clear definition of what this group does. But the way this group is set up now, being an advisory group isn't isn't working. It just is not working. Um, it needs to change more to like the model Northampton has, where it's a group like this, and they actually, I think, have a couple of counselors on that group, and then there's staff involved with it as well. And there's actual resources put towards the group that can actually bang some things out. And, and if we keep even if we even the council comes up with this is what we want you to do we want you to be an advisory group um we're still going to have this um because what we have right now is we have the same things most parents have the child child goes to mom or dad and says i want to do this because i think this would be cool or this needs to be fixed and it's well, this needs to be fixed in our world not this would be cool and, and mom says, well, I can't get to it right now. So then they go to dad and they talk to dad. And then, you know, then they go to grandma or grandpa and they work all the way around the system. And, and a million people are, have been talked about this thing and it becomes this little thing, but there's no, there's no real, there's no real thing. And then sometimes you get mom saying, well, go talk to dad. Dad says, well, go talk to mom. And mom says, go talk to grandma. Um, it's, you get what I'm saying with that analogy. I'll stop. Um, <laughs> That's really how this has been functioning over the years of the TAC. You've done some good stuff, but then it hasn't been able to get out of here and get into the, where it needs to be because the group really has no authority except to be advisory. And then when I send something up sometimes, because the council's agenda or the select board's agenda has been, our priorities have been such, it won't make it and it won't go any further. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to say that as we talk about this, it really kind of needs to change and be more of a formal thing, more like a actual, um, I forgot what the Northampton calls it. It's called but, a transportation commission. Yes. And he's been and that, right. I mean, so, I mean, the town manager had um, talked with me about that. I'm, I, um, you know, just the idea of exploring it. And I, I would agree with you on that. Like it, I mean, I think it's hard you know, in the advisor rule, it can be frustrating for many people, right? Because, um, you know, there's no clear link chain of command. We don't have authority. It, it can be like, sometimes if we're waiting for something to be referred from the council, like there's an item, it, it goes to the council, it gets referred to TSO, then TSO, you know, and Andy says TSO has a lot to do, and then it comes from TSO, and then maybe TSO will refer its attack and then it just is a process that takes a really long time right so if we could be a body that actually had authority and could make decisions you know kind of one stop decisions and then go back to the council if it needs to have council authority like that is just a cleaner more efficient streamlined process so um not to take away from the council's power you know as the keepers of the public way but just the council's really busy the council has meetings until midnight and so on so some of this work could hopefully be like delegated some of the weeds you know and come yeah. to come to the council with, with some clear plans and recommendations or something so um it would be great to see that happen yeah so I just, I just also feel like it would just really be bad to like lose all of this expertise and that is not elsewhere in the town or, or all of these people who are invested in this and have done this for a while and only come for one purpose to in, to better our transportation network in town. Um, and to lose all of that expertise, clearly some of us have more expertise than others, um, but 
it, it's not motivating as a professional to come to these meetings if we're really not not doing not not advancing the mission that we each feel we're here to contribute to toward well and i'll say too i mean we did recently kind of moving ahead on our items but um i mean we did interview the town manager and i were interviewing some really good candidates to join TAC, right so i think we could get some really good new energy some people with some great skills um hopefully those appointments will go up to the council you know within before the end of the year but um it'd be great you know as we bring in new people to also be able to get more done <laughs> so, yes yeah, christine. So. christine has a hand her hand up yep. hi guys yeah i just um on the northampton example i just wanted to understand a little bit more if that commission was um an extension of the the mayor's office there or an extension of the um the town council you know sort of delegating or chunking out some authority around transportation and and asking you know the body to deal with it i guess i'm just trying to get a handle on who would be um kind of creating something like that well so go ahead oh uh, well so i was just going to mention um that I believe, I mean, I can look it up. I've I've looked into the Transportation Commission before. I think it's actually like a Transportation and Parking Commission, like a lot of parking related things go to them. And I know that parking is also something that can take up a lot of time of TSO currently. Um, uh, so I believe in Northampton, a lot of them are under the mayor's office, like even most of the committees, you know, people are appointed by the mayor for a lot of these committees and so on but Guilford what did you they, they are but they're they're council they're like council committees mm -hmm. um and that I you know and I did start to look at um what cities because Amherst is technically a city like looking at the different cities in Massachusetts and seeing which have transportation commissions and how those function and so on and so what their bylaws and so on are to see if that might be you know, a model that we could look at for Amherst or, or what we think would work best. So, um, anyway. Andy has his hand up. Yeah, so I um, tried to see how we can draw this to a conclusion yeah, because sure. this has been a very valuable discussion. Uh, just uh, as far as where we are with the charter, the uh, two types of committees really can be created some come from the town manager i think more come from the town town manager and which is the equivalent of the mayor because it's the executive branch of government under the charter and some come from the council that can be created by the council and the charge in the appointment process is different um but i you know i think that the tac is uh, a uh, executive branch uh, appointed by the, the uh, town manager. <clears throat> um, what I would suggest is that um, I will um, fairly quickly, as quickly as I can, this is a hard season with the for the finance committee, so I'm sort of stretched right now. But as quickly as I can, I will uh, get a memo to um, Anika Lopes is the uh, the new committee chair and uh, explain to her uh, what it is that we talked about today and suggest that we might want to have a meeting where we really talk about the whole question of how the to your committee and TSO interlock with each other how and uh, also what uh, how we might be able at TSO to um, use your expertise to help us with some of the issues we're dealing with. And uh, I'll bring up the examples that uh, you've talked about tonight to the best that I can can do that. And uh, what I will recommend is that um, a couple of members of the committee, Tracy's there a lot at TSO meetings, but uh, maybe, uh, 
or somebody else who'd be interested, Kim or somebody um, who could also attend so that it can be a discussion that involves several members of TAC in addition and uh, try and see if we can get that on an agenda um, within a reasonable period of time. Great. When is that meeting? Well, we don't. We don't we have don't, a meeting it's yet. Not, it's not scheduled uh, because uh, we generally meet every other week, but our uh, the uh, uh, agenda is really worked out in meetings with the chair and the president of the council and the town manager. Uh, they meet every few weeks and talk about what should be on the uh, TSO agenda because the town manager is the staff person actually for that committee. And uh, <clears throat> so- well, and Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's really helpful, Andy. I really appreciate um, so I can't putting that together. Um, I mean, so one thing, you know, I'm thinking back to, I'm thinking back to like a year ago before the new council, you know, took office. And that at that time at the TAC, we were having discussions just because, you know, there had been some questions about what is TAC, what does TAC do, what's our authority, what should we be involved in. I do remember that we did spend time at at least two meetings, I think, like putting together a statement of like, this is how TAC sees itself. You know, these are our priorities and so on. And and we had talked with TSO, the TSO chair at that time, like Dorothy Pam, about coming to TSO and like having a presentation. We were actually on the agenda and we ended up getting bumps and, um, but, you know, but moving that forward, I think would be great because I do, you know, that document was still out there and I even submitted it to the um, council president. You know, I don't, I think it may have been in a packet or maybe it didn't make it into one of the council packets, but just to say like, here's TSO and we're, you know, these are the things that we've identified and and we still have that list, so we can even go back to that, you know. Well, I mean, we also have not only our like street priorities, but remember, we also like ended up um, um, deciding different levels of what was it, Eve? It was levels of service and service on different roads, like how yeah. how you know traffic stress and levels yeah. of service. Yeah, I mean, we right. did so much work on both street maps and um and and Guilford sort of like, like we needed we needed staff support you know right. yeah no and sidewalks sure. and details like you know and they were throughout the town it wasn't one part of town it was the whole town right i think that those yeah and could i just i just wanted to add so um just to elaborate a little bit andy yeah i sort of led the charge to um to do a pretty detail, I mean, it was working with Tracy and Bruce and several other people. We looked at like um, pedestrian and bike plans around the country and prioritization plans around the country. And we consolidated them into, you know, sort of best practices and what we thought was the best application. And from that, we came up with a bunch of different criteria and methods as well as overall governance recommendations actually um, for the TAC and the town. Um, and then we couldn't, well, and we also worked um, when there was a draft um, pet and bike plan, we spent meeting after meeting, four or five meetings going through the map and detailing exactly where we saw different um, paths. Um, so this is like a year and a half of work, I would say we spent on these two projects. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, the only thing uh, that might be uh, where you defined what are uh, what are connector roads, residential streets, and uh, right, or in primary, or I, and that actually was very helpful and is was used um, and is incorporated into the um, parking uh, policy that the um, TSO developed a year ago and was used in the Lincoln Sunset. Um, I don't, my guess is it's a different thing you're talking about. I don't know. What we had was uh, we had an initial map of bike and pedestrian routes, and then we wrote words all over it about where we thought um, 
things needed to change. And we were looking at where would be pedestrian routes, where would be sort of, um, what do you call it? Like any experience bicyclists and where would be fast commuting cyclists. That was what it was. So we weren't that calling it really, primary roads or anything. It was really no, different that, then. Okay. Yeah, it must have been Guilford's um, information, but it was, it's very detailed and um, yeah, it involved a lot of- Well, and it does, right? It involves the connectivity like between different parts yes. of town, right. like in terms of like commuter routes, as well as like neighborhood routes and things like in but terms certainly, of- um, I think this is something, so, you know, we, we, could can... get, we could get a much more um, like, de not detailed, but like a better overview and present it to the TSO and say, you know, we've done all this work. We've thought years about these kinds of issues and we're happy to continue to do these kinds of issues, right? Yeah. We could definitely well, and... get that all together, I... show our priority maps. Show right. our levels of stress, show our like right. where we need connections in the town, where we need sidewalks in the town, bike map, you know, bike paths. You know, we've done a lot of this work. So, and, it, and Andy, I will send you what we, what the attack we had sent both to the council, the council president and town manager last year, just sort of summarizing, you know, how we see tech. Cause I mean, that was something we'd put together too. I remember that. So, and yeah, I, yeah. I'm sure I have a copy, but uh, yeah, I'll go ahead. But we can, we can resend. We um, can resend. Well, that sounds, you sound like some good topics to, to talk about next time. Right. So that we can, because we'll probably just, I mean, we can talk about with December, but maybe, you know, with the holidays, we either have one or two meetings, but right. we, we do some of this prioritization, just revisit our list and, you know, Guilford, if he's up to it, he can share his list and we can all talk um, about that. So. So, so I apologize okay. for the side. Yeah. I think that was a, this was a very important, like, side topic. Um, and um, I guess we should get back to our, our stated agenda, which includes... Um, um the new well, the, approval of the yeah i mean we can talk about just, um, any, yeah. uh, any um referrals from the um, right so so kim just before we move on so i mean this is one of the reasons that i had put this 4a bike and ped priorities map on on the agenda you know coming just before we move on um because it did come up at planning board right and the planning board is saying you know well, we're making decisions about different developments and things, you know, and whether they need to provide parking or things like that, like the bike, this bike ped pedestrian priority networks plan is like an important resource. And um, we want to be able to use that. And so that's when somebody from planning board reached out to me and said, or actually two members of planning board reached out to me and said, you know, Tracy, like what's going on with the bicycle and pedestrian plan? Like where's the net, you know, where's the maps and things like that so that they can use that. So that's a resource for the town um, in there in the planning board discussions and decisions. So. Tracy, I mean, uh, um, Eve, sorry. You're muted, Eve. Sorry. Um, Guilford, <clears throat> do you have the, um, the most recent annotated map because you was sort of as I was fading out of being on the tack, you took over annotating. So the part that I have saved on my computer only has North Amherst annotations. You had the rest of them. Sorry, my mouse is way over there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I believe so. Um, I, I think like, we have all all the annotations basically we have it all yes and then i had also went back and i looked at like our minutes and so on and i had a list of like the four or five meetings that we had the longest discussions about the map for and i had actually been thinking i mean we could give somebody like the annotated version but they could also listen to like those relevant parts of the meeting just so that they sort of understand like if somebody is not like, could you could you share that annotated map with um, the current TAC so that people who haven't seen it can see it? Yeah, so I think, um, well, Stefan and Chris are the new members, right? Because the rest of us, but. I can, yeah. we can try to find it. 
I know we have it, but it's not digital. I think it's a hard copy because I was actually writing it on the map I had on my desk. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we were meeting over Zoom, right? And then we were yes. marking it up. Yeah. So all right. Yeah, okay. that would be great. I think it would be really useful because at least then the information's there and it's not just buried in your stack of paperwork, but it's you know, even if you if you scan it, right, then it becomes a copy that can be shared and, and built from. Yes, but you have to be able to read the notes. Sure. Well, that's <laughs> well, that's its own issue. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so what did we, so in terms of, oh yeah, so I did want to just give a quick update about the Lincoln Sunset Elm on street parking restrictions. So in the end, the the council, they did, there was quite a bit of discussion about that. Um, I think some of some of the members weren't here, you know, before we went live with our meeting tonight, but I mean, there was a motion that failed, but it was to refer back to TSO to like explore it further and consider things such as like one way pairs and other options, parking meters and other things that had been considered previously. Um, but in the end that failed and as I was mentioning again, you know, I was mentioning at the beginning of the meeting too, that was something I do remember, maybe I don't remember all the discussions, but I do remember discussions back about um, 15, 16 years ago about um, Sunset and Lincoln and having one-way pairs. And there was also an ex research that was done by um, transportation students at UMass at that time where they actually put in a bar barricade for a little while I don't know, Kim, do you remember, were you here then? And mm -hmm. there were some barricades, I think it was on sunset or something. So you couldn't have through traffic temporarily. Um, no, and, there was there was never any. Well, not all the way. It was it was narrowed or something. There was something in. No, we never, uh, we never did anything like that. We okay. actually, the test was we put out those rubber speed humps. Then oh, right, okay, the speed humps. Oh, yeah. speed oh humps. right. Yeah. And those have made a huge difference. I mean, when I went when I went back and I looked at like the letters, you know, where people had written in at that time, like before there were the speed tables in that area, um, there were, I mean, cars could go really fast on those streets. And they did. They did. And really. and I know like in on Blue Hills Road, it that's a big deal. That's been a big deal too. Yeah. Um no, so that I, becomes it made a big difference. Yeah. So I think we just left lost Marcus, but that's okay. So I guess we'll wrap up. Um, let's just can we just look at the calendars quickly there's about still four of us. So yeah. Oh, there's still four of us. That's great. Oh, thanks, Kim. Mm -hmm. Um well Marcus ended up in the uh he's still here. Oh, oh did yeah. you kick did he get kicked out somehow? Somehow he ended up in the <laughs> attendees. He must be driving. Oh, that happens to me sometimes. Um, so anyway, so it was, any so it was nice. TSO, TSO referrals? Yeah, Andy, did you have any updates from us, TSO? No. See, Nothing we're further. so eager. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I do have one question just about, <laughs> um, well, you had mentioned the 25 mile per hour speed limit throughout town, you know, if that was something. I've heard that mentioned as a potential referral sometime in the future, but also is there, does TSO have a sense yet? I know TSO's plate's really full, but about what's going to happen next with the streetlights proposal at all? So uh, streetlights is being uh, just beginning to be worked on in the initial presentation of the proposal from those two counselors who had uh, suggested the bylaw was referred to was discussed for the first time and uh so it needs to work through the process and whether it should come to tac is i think a very interesting question one that i um hadn't thought about that actually does make a lot of sense because you've talked about um where they are placed i think that there's some people who have been complaining at various times about uh, the light that is shining into their houses. And I think that what, what the struggle that the sponsors were having is 
how much of that was the design of the lights and uh, whether they can just be different so that they focus down as opposed to focusing around uh, and others is uh, uh, dissatisfaction with some locations like the ends of cul-de-sacs. Mm. Um, and uh, but right now, uh, the thought was to try and focus first on the type of lighting and then folk and then come back to the, the question of location as a second mm -hmm. set of issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so I don't I've I'd submitted comments when I learned of the counselor's initial proposal back when the council was talking about it over the summer and I. I submitted comments, you know, just on behalf of myself again when it came up at TSO. I mean, and I'm not an expert on lighting at all, but um, <laughs> I mean, it. I I do see a lot of like transportation safety implications in terms of where lights are placed and if a lot of lights are removed, you know, in terms of pedestrian safety, bike safety, driving safety. Um, there's many factors. And so I would hope that at least that piece of it, if that piece continues to move forward too, and, you know, certain areas of town are being proposed to have fewer lights or different. I, I, I would hope that that could come to tech, but I mean, we're advisory, so we'll, we'll advise when you are requested, but I yeah. had just wait, I had just waited in myself personally, just because those issues are concerned to me and I walk in a lot at night and so, I can so, see the challenges. So our committee actually started we we ha we were concerned with lighting a, a long while ago when I first joined this committee but it mainly had to do with um lighting and and where crosswalks were which seems like a no-brainer but there certainly aren't always um lighting where there are crosswalks in in streets so um, yeah, I think most of the complaints that the committee was getting and the council were getting had to do with residential neighborhoods which aren't crosswalk issues right yeah 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 i understand that yeah so that's where i think you know our committee certainly could probably could tackle you know safety and crosswalks and 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 um and bike ways but yeah those kinds of issues seem more like up your up the council's like you know purview than ours right certainly but we also discussed a lot about down like different types of down lighting that were were available on streets so um you know certainly well yeah. i know i mean one thing that came up at the tso presentation as well as um and i've heard also i i remember some of the public comment at the palmroy west street hearing is was about like the impact of glare right that um that the impact on glare in terms of transportation safety like if drivers are driving in an area where there's glare or things like that so it's not just about having lighting or no lighting it's also about what kind of lighting and mm -hmm. what can yeah. be done to reduce the glare that could actually obstruct vision instead of actually making it better so those are things but um yeah great um so we have i just want to make the committee aware we have four minutes left so, so is there anything you deem essential, Tracy, that we need to No, get? I mean, I'll just, as I mentioned, the TAC appointments, um, there were people interviewed right. and the town manager will be preparing a memo that will go to TSO and then it will go to the council and Ooh, hopefully that's we will exciting. have new members soon. And then I just wanted to, you know, just decide if we can at this meeting about when we expect to meet um, in December or January, if we think it's, if we should meet once or twice. Um, um, Andy, what is the TSO's schedule in December? Do you know? Are you just planning to have one meeting or two meetings? Or I'm not sure the answer okay. to that. I assume it would be two, but uh, I'd have to go and look. Okay, no, schedule. that's fine. Yeah. So we should plan it on at least having <laughs> one. And um, Marcus has his hand up. Marcus. Oh, I can speak. Okay, awesome. Sorry. I was just, uh, I'm on my phone. I've got to take my son to ice hockey. Um, now, what was I going to say? I can't remember. I apologize. About Never meetings? Uh, meetings? Yeah. meetings? No, it was before that. Right the before street that. lights and oh, yeah, the street. Uh, yeah, never mind. I'm sorry. I can't remember. 
It's okay. That's okay. <laughs> Don't multitask too much. Okay. That's not too safe either. Um, okay. So do we want to stick with our schedule of meeting on the first uh, Thursday of the month? Yeah, I think that, works. that would be the week after Thanksgiving. You, you might may just want to do one second. meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what about the next week? I wonder if that so, might be so, more yeah, better. I mean, it sounds TSO. like the TSO might not meet between now and then. And the TSO hasn't isn't you know meeting with Thanksgiving. TSO is and... meeting on the eighth, supposedly. Okay. Which would um, be the second. That would be the second. Maybe we should do the third. We could meet on the fifteenth. Yeah. yeah. Right, if, if people are available. I am. Okay. That works for me. Oh Chris, wait, Chris. Chris, what are you saying? You're muted. It's good. Okay. All right. Let's go with the fifteenth then. Stefan, you're good with the fifteenth. Yeah. Great. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. No, that sounds good. And um, and there were some topics too. I mean, we can circle back. It would be great to have a discussion about our priorities. Um, and I did want to circle back. Just we did have good discussions with uh, the person about the West. East Rail, and, oh, yeah, also, cool. and also with Valley Bikes, you yeah. know, if those are things. And I know Chris and I have also, you know, had on the back burner the whole safe routes to school and things. So mm -hmm. um, maybe we can have some of those discussions just about with Valley Bikes. I mean, it did leave me some ideas about how tech could be involved going forward, you know, whether or not that's realistic or not. You know, some of it is just based on our time and our priorities. So I also wonder if we shouldn't start just thinking more about the where the new school is and um the new elementary school will be and like issues around kids getting to school and safety and traffic and I'm, i mean i know that's a super big topic but maybe we could just take a look at the maps of what's existing around there and see if there's anything new that will be um is planned. I have no idea um, around there and just think, no, nothing. So I feel like it's, it's important to get ahead of that because that's going to be a big change. And there's lots of traffic there in the mornings and the evenings. Right. I know, I know, but maybe we should start yeah. thinking about it. There's no, there's no money and there's no final, there's no even preliminary plan. Well, and it's not this, or it's not school. all approved yet, right? I mean, it's got, it hasn't gotten to the voters in terms of approving okay. it. Okay, so things. no. No, I mean, I think it's important. Um, I mean, one of, the, of one of the reasons we got more involved with Safe Routes to School is because if you're in the Safe Routes to School program, there can be funding, you know, for improvements. I mean, it can be some considerable money um, to help pay for question. Safe Routes to School infrastructure. Yes, Andy? Yeah, I was going to suggest that you uh, contact Kathy Shane, <clears throat> who's a counselor, is a counselor, but is chair of the elementary school building committee, and um, bring the, just have one person call Kathy, and um, she has um, some good maps and descriptions of what the preliminary design concept is now for the school and how traffic patterns are supposed to work within the property. And uh, that's going to then bridge into what happens on the street. Yeah. So you might want to reach out to the elementary school building committee. Sure. Yeah, that's so I, I was in touch with them over the yeah. summer. Like I did reach out to Kathy and Chris and I um, had done, you know, a study about like safe route, you know, what we saw as like the safe routes to school challenges. And we did inventories. Of, we did surveys about how many people are walking and biking to school and what the main routes they're taking or what, what needs to be done to improve. So we looked at, we looked at all three of the elementary schools for that. But um, of course, it's going to be all different when we have uh, just only two schools and one. That's true. One much larger school. Yeah, no, it'll be it'll be very different. So that's why I just think we should get, just get in front of that. But um, it is time. So it is I, definitely time. Yes, it's so. time to um, adjourn. So but thank um, you. Thank you all for being here and have a good night. All right. Take care. Bye. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Yay! Happy Christmas. Bye.